my first video on transition matrices, I um, introduced you to the idea that we could look at populations over time using a matrix. Um, and I used a meerkat example. So this is my in the population in year N. So that's the number of adult meerkats. That's the number of junior or juvenile meerkats written as a vector. And I could work out what they would be in year N plus 1. I'm going to call that Vn plus 1, and this is vector Vn, by applying this transition matrix, which is something we know about population change. And this is all year on year. Yeah? And we extended that idea that we could work out what the population in year N would be by just multiplying by the transition matrix N times. Now, in this video, I'd like to look at what happens and we'll look at trends, and um, we use this meerkats as an example. What happens over time, and how much is it affected by the initial populations? So what I'm going to do is try three different population setups, and really it's the ratio of adults to juveniles throughout this. So I'm going to use a thousand adults, and I'm going to use either 200 juveniles as the midpoint, 400 as being a high point, five being a low point and I'm going to look at what happens we're going to start off by looking at what happens over um, 10 years and 100 years by just doing the multiplications and later on we'll come back and look at what's happening over a thousand years but on the whole it'll be 10 and 100 years so if I got my calculator out and I use those populations so for the first one I'm starting off with a um, thousand and oh, 100, and sorry, 200 juveniles. So I started with 200 juveniles. And over the first year, the number of juveniles rises a bit. Um, the number of juveniles peaks at 10, you know, after year 10, and it starts to drop away um, for by year 100. What's happening to my adult population? Well, it started off at 1,000, it's gone to 900, it's gone to 700. So it's going down slowly, isn't it? So the whole overall population is going down, but the number of adults, sorry, juveniles, went from 200 to 240, so it went up. What happens if I started with 400 juveniles? Well, 400 juveniles, next year I've got 360, in 10 years I've got 340, in 100 years I'm down to 260, so it's come down again. My adult population again is dropping slowly. And what happens if I only started with five juveniles? Well, the number rises to 200. That's coming from the number of adults, isn't it? Um, so that raised it to 200. It went up to 280 over 10 years and down to 220 over 100 years. Again, the adults are dropping through this. Now, in each of those, it's interesting, isn't it? Because this 240, 260, 220 looking similar. But if we actually look at it as a ratio, of 699 to 240 adults to juveniles and I just divided one by the other then the um, juveniles over adults here is divided by adults is 0 0.346 and in this setup it's 0.347 and in this setup it's 0.346 so it didn't matter how many juveniles we started off with that's not affected where we ended up in terms of the ratio we've ended up at a ratio of 0 0.346. So let's have a look at what's happening with our vector multiplication. So if I wanted T10, so that's my, uh, after 10 years, I get, I'd just multiply it out, wouldn't I? 10 times my calculator, T100, I'd get that. T1000, I'd get that. Now, it's not particularly obvious at this point until I look at the ratios of these two values here, which is 1 to... 0 0.3466 and the ratio of these two which is 1 to 0 0.365 hang on these two uh, ratios are the same okay so let's investigate that using invariant line approach so what happens in an invariant line i'm going to say my invariant line is y equals mx plus i don't have a plus c do i i don't have a plus c because i'm going through the origin um, here's my matrix that's my vector point that I start with on the line. And if I do that matrix operation, it's an invariant line. I should have my original uh, vector, 
multiplied by some multiplier, I'm going to call it lambda. I'm going to solve this using the sim equations. So the first one is the upper line of my matrix, that's the lower line. I'm going to eliminate lambda by substituting the top equation into the bottom, and therefore that goes into there. And before you know where I am, I've got a quadratic in M, in gradient, and I get two solutions, don't I? Here are my two solutions. Uh, mathematically, but one of them has got a gradient of negative 2.06 and the other one has a gradient of positive 0 0.34659. Oh, we've seen that number before, haven't we? That's the ratios that we've been seeing. Um, what about the multipliers that fit with those? Well, if I use the equation that relates um, the lambda multiplier to the gradient there and sub substitute in these values, m1 and m2, I get these two multipliers. Lambda 1 is 0 0.34, no, sorry, 0.3229, and lambda 2 is 0 0.997. That's very close to 1, isn't it? And if I just wrote the M1s out in vector form, I get these two vectors here. So that would tell me my invariant lines. This one is y equals minus 2.06x. And this one is y equals 0 0.34659x. OK, so let's start looking at that, um, what happens over time. If I wanted to see what happens in 100 years, well, if I started off with anything on this invariant line, with this vector, um, and I wanted to know what happened in 100 years, well I just do t to the, t to the power 100 times the vector, which of course we know is just going to be lambda 1 to the 100 lots of the vector. And lambda 1 to the 100 is this number to the 100 is 10 to the minus 50, which is very, very small. What's happened with the vector v2? So if I started with a v2 and I multiplied it uh, by 100 t to the 100 to find out what happens in 100 years. That's lambda 2 to the 100. Lambda 2 to the 100 is 0 0.740. So that's quite substantial, isn't it? Whereas the other one, it's 10 to the minus 50. This one's basically disappeared over 100 years, any component of that. So let's look at that graphically, shall we? OK, so I've drawn uh, my vectors. So here's the V1 vector, there it is, it's uh, got a gradient of negative 2, hasn't it? And there's my invariant line that goes with that. And here's my V2 vector, uh, it's got a gradient of 0 0.34659, and that's the invariant line underneath it. So what happens if I start at a point here? This is my population 0, my V0 point. Um, and I've got a thousand. I'm going to choose this one that's a bit further away from the, the V2 line. Starts off with a thousand adults and only five juniors. Now, this point here I could think of as being made up of a component of V1 and a component of V2. So, what happens over the first year to the component of V1? Well, the the sorry, v2 well actually that gets multiplied by this number so it basically doesn't change my v2 component but what happens to my v1 component well it gets multiplied by 0 0.3 so it becomes 0 0.3 of whatever it started out as so this is what it started out as there's my v2 start component yeah and i'm only afterwards i'm only going to have 0 0.3 of it so it's going to go to there isn't it because my that's probably going to be my V1 or my population 1. And if I want to know what the population in year 2 is, well, again, the V2 component's unchanged, really, but the V1 just gets multiplied by 0 0.3, so it ends up there. That would be my V2. And V3 would be very close. And by the end of it, V10 is basically here, isn't it? It's going to... So what's happened to my point? Wherever I started in terms of my V1 component, it's going to head towards the head towards the invariant line there if i started off crazily over here say it would do the same thing coming this way wouldn't it if i started there the next year would be there third no, point 0.3 and then it'd be point 0.3 and point 0.3 and it would end up there wouldn't it so rapidly 
whatever my start point is, I end up being drawn to my invariant line within about 10 years. And then there's a slow decline after that, isn't there? Because we found that V100 had a multiplier of 0.7. So that would be V100, slow decline in the population. So what's that telling us? Well, there's a dominant invariant line. And the dominance depends on the multiplier. So this has got a large multiplier compared to that, and it's the magnitude, not the sign. So we could look at the magnitude of our lambda that decides it. And this one's a dominant uh, invariant line, and effectively this is like a recessive or recessive gene or recessive line. And that one just went, any component that went to zero. And so over a period of time, everything ends up on that line and the ratio of um, juveniles to adults head, head, tends to this ratio here. Okay, there we have it then. If we want to know what happens to one of these transition matrices over an extended period of time, we can find our invariant lines, we can find which has got the dominant multiplier this one here is much larger than that and therefore we can see that all our population is going to tend to that ratio it might increase if it's in a growth or it could decrease if it's in a reduction but it's going to tend to that ratio so interesting idea isn't it best of luck